Experts from over 50 nations put their heads together to find the best way to save the temples. The most daunting challenge was Abu Simbel's mountain setting. One idea was to allow Abu Simbel to flood and construct a kind of colossal aquarium. They would build a dome around the site. Pumps inside the walls would filter the muddy Nile to maintain the visibility of the water. Observation galleries would allow spectators above to peer down onto the submerged monument. To get a closer view, elevators would shuttle visitors underwater. The biggest problem with this plan was that the temples are carved in sandstone, which is very porous. Over time, water would eventually erode the stone, causing the temples to crumble. They began to realize the only way to save the temples was to move them. Engineers calculated that the flooding of the dam would raise water levels by 60 meters. To guarantee their safety, the temples would have to be raised by at least 65 meters and moved 200 meters inland. It seemed like an almost impossible problem. The difficulty with moving Abu Simbel is that you have a huge cliff above the uh, temple itself, extending 60 meters back into the rock. So a huge footprint, uh, and to attempt to mo move all of that in one piece is, uh, is a major exercise. One option was to raise the temples up to the new site in one piece. Movers would need to cut around the entire monument to free it from the mountain. Underneath, they would install 650 hydraulic jacks. Lifting in unison, the jacks would gradually raise a quarter of a million tons, a millimeter at a time. Once fully extended, they would replace the jacks with concrete pillars. These would then form a platform under the structure so the jacks could be reset and lift the great temple to the next level. They would need to repeat this 200 times. The risk was enormous. Nothing this heavy had ever been moved before. If any jacks or pillars failed, the result could be catastrophic. The difficulty of moving the temple en masse would have been hugely complex. And you're lifting something which weighs 250,000 tons. Uh, I'm sure that in, the, in 1964 would have been a groundbreaker, literally. There was another way. Using the rising water level to their advantage, movers proposed encasing the temple inside an immense concrete barge. Then as the water level rose, the temple would be floated to safety. A brilliant idea but it would take over six years for the waters to raise the heavy load to its new location. And there was a serious risk. In the event of a storm, the temples might be damaged. Engineers began to realize Abu Simbel was simply too heavy to move en masse. The only practical way was the least appealing, to cut the temples up into small sections for the big move. This idea horrified archeologists. Cutting a monument is a very, very tough thing to accept. But you had to take this with that, you know, the bitter with the sweet. This was the safest one. You are absolutely sure that nothing was going to be lost. You are getting it away from the water. It's going to be on terra firma. In early 1964, an international team of 2,000 engineers and contractors from Sweden, Italy, France, Germany, and Egypt began the monumental task of dismantling Abu Simbel.